let's just talk about Alzheimer's disease, which is, if you can imagine, cognitive impairment, which starts in your 30s and then over time accumulates and you end up getting diagnosed at around mid-60s to 70s and beyond with Alzheimer's disease, which there's two hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease that's really prevalent, and they are the accumulation of these proteins in the brain, which is tau, which ends up being tau tangles, and then we've got amyloid beta. Here's the thing. these They're acting as the villains. These two proteins act as the villains. We hear about amyloid beta and we think, oh my God, we don't want this, but they are they reside in the brain. In fact, there is a difference between the two. We've got first and foremost amyloid, which resides outside of the neuron. And then we've got the tau proteins, which ends up being the tangles, the tau tangles. They actually reside inside the neuron. So let me just do a brief uh, neuroanatomy just for yes, people please, listening. Please, um, and they'll love it. I, I do this as well for a living. I, I teach um, people about the brain, which I love. So your brain is around three pounds and it's like jello. So it's quite malleable. You know, you, you can stick your fingers inside it just like jello. And it's made up of a bit of protein, but it's made up of mainly fat and water. We have cells, just like the cells in our body. We have them in our brain and they're called neurons. The only difference is the neurons in our brain have these long axons that come off them and then these dendrites, like little feet. These dendrites connect with other neurons and that's how we produce our thoughts and our actions through chemical responses. We have around 87 billion neurons in the human brain with each cell making 15,000 to 30,000 connections. That's wild, right? That's why we say that the brain is so energy consuming. It takes around 25% of the total energy expenditure, but of course it does. If you just do the math on that, it's like, I can't do that fast math, like 10 <laughs> to the power of 50 something, but it's just unbelievable the amount of connections that we're seeing. So you think 50,000 to 30,000 connections per neuron, those start to die off. And when we see cognitive impairment. And Alzheimer's disease, you'll see a difference between these different dementia states. Alzheimer's disease is you'll see a per person start to get short-term memory complaints. Their long-term memory is intact, but they start to forget things such as a person's name, mm. the street that they live on, uh, the keys, you know, where are my keys? I can't find my keys. Or I had this conversation with so-and-so yesterday, but I'm forgetting the conversation. That's that's generally the, the first symptoms that happen. But let's go back to the brain because I'm getting off topic. Let's just stick to the brain for a moment. So you've got these neurons and and these, we've got our cell body. And then in these axons, right at the end of the axon, we've got these things called microtubules and they're acting as scaffolding for the for the axon. And with these microtubules, you've got around them, wrapped around them, is tau. And what happens is when we have lack of sleep, lack of proper nutrition, uh, a lot of stress, we end up getting the breakdown of this tau. And when the breakdown of this tau occurs, we see the collapse of these microtubules. And this is what ends up forming these tau tangles. So this is happening with inside the neuron. But then you've also got outside of the neuron, you've got this amyloid beta. And this is basically what happens is it blocks the connections between the neurons. So you've got two things happening here and they're both quite scary. Um, but yeah, that's... And every parent is thinking, oh my gosh, that's me. No sleep, can't find keys, can't remember names. Yeah. Um, what can we do about prevention and taking care of our brain in that way? Well, first thing to say is it starts in your 30s. Now, I work with a, uh, a specific type of population. And generally, the people I work with are in their 30s. And they say to me, I'm young. And I say, it happens in your 30s. These neurodegenerative disease states it's not a moment in time, which a lot of people think. They think 70 years old, Alzheimer's disease. Actually, it happens around 20 to 30 years prior to diagnosis. So we really need to be on top of these lifestyle factors. 
There's many. There's around, uh, I would say around 25 risk factors. Genes, genetics is always going to be one. We know that. Uh, But the three main domains that I think that everyone can be working on, the free things is sleep and then exercise and nutrition. So let's talk about them. Sleep is fundamentally, in my opinion, the most underrated high performance tool that we have. Okay. You guys, you guys heard it here. Yes. I often fight with myself. Uh, I study, which we were talking offline. I'm, I'm currently studying the effects of exercise induced myokines and how they have an effect on the brain. And I absolutely love that. So I fight with myself thinking, what's more important? Is it exercise? Is it sleep? So I have that constant back and Same. forth. Same. I actually do too. Really? <laughs> I, do. I love that nutrition's yeah. still back here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do too. Yeah. So sleep is incredible and it's free. But as we age, we also see a decline in our sleep. It just happens through hormones, especially for women who are perimenopause and postmenopausal women. We see a decline in their sleep performance. But there's around four stages of sleep. So let's let's deconstruct them. You've got stage one, and this is when we're just about to, we're falling asleep. Stage two, we're in light sleep. So the knock of a wall or maybe someone beeping can wake you up. Then we move into the the really important stages. We've got stage three and stage four. Now, stage three is called deep sleep. It's also actually called slow wave sleep because if you'll see, and you know, I've been, um, we had to do sleep medicine and I was in a sleep lab, a PSG, and you see these big, long, huge waves. And that's indicative of slow wave sleep. That's where it gets the name from. And during this stage, your brain actually goes through many different manufacturing processes. The first thing that happens is we get a lot of secretion of hormones during deep sleep. So our body senses, our brain senses, okay, Louise is in deep sleep. I'm going to release hormones. I'm going to release IGF-1 or growth hormone, which is, you would know, responsible for protein synthesis. So we really get regeneration of muscles during that stage. So hugely important for athletes. If they're exercising, if you want to get the effects of a a hypertrophy training session, you want to make sure you're sleeping. Recovery isn't taking place during the ice baths. It's taking place during sleep. 